So that was the first round of spotlights. Let's just give another round of applause to all the spotlight speakers. And we have one oral in this session, and uh, this oral is one of the winners of the Best Paper Award. The talk will be given by Chris Lia. So um, I have some mysterious envelope, which I believe contains the award, and I'm gonna give it to Chris, and let's just please um, join me in congratulating Chris and all the authors. And Chris will be talking about nearly tight sample complexity bounds for learning mixtures of Gaussians. Okay, uh, so hi everyone. Uh, it's certainly an, on an honor to receive that award. Um, I've enjoyed many of the talks here, and a lot of them are probably equally deserving. So this is joint work with my co-authors, Hassan Ashtiani, Shai Ben David, uh, Nick Harvey, Abbas Moravian, uh, and Yuni Plan. And without their hard work, this project would not have been possible. Uh, so the problem that we look at in uh, this work is that of density estimation. So in this problem, there is an unknown distribution D from which we can draw IID samples from. And our goal is to design some algorithm that will take these samples as input and output some distribution D hat that is as close to the unknown distribution as possible, uh, let's say in the L1 distance. So this is a very fundamental problem and has been studied for well over a century. And possibly one of the most fundamental questions you can ask uh, is how many samples do you need from this unknown distribution in order to get a good approximation to it? And such a question is very important in practice because you can imagine that drawing samples from this, uh, from this distribution can be very expensive. For example, it might require sequencing a person's genome just to get a single sample. So in fact, Daikinikla has posed an open problem to try to better understand the sample complexity for density estimation. And more specifically, he asked whether there is some notion of complexity which will completely characterize the sample complexity of F, of some class F. And there's been a lot of work recently on trying to get tight bounds for various classes. And this work will explore uh, tight bounds for a very fundamental class, uh, which is that of mixtures of Gaussians. So let's start off with the simplest case, which is just a single Gaussian in D dimensions. So as many of you know, there's a very simple algorithm for this. Uh, if you want to try to get some error epsilon, say in L1 distance, then you simply draw d squared over epsilon squared samples, uh, compute the sample mean, and compute the sample covariance matrix. And this is, uh, with, high probability, with high probability, this will give you a very good approximation. Actually, this bound here is quite intuitive. Uh, a Gaussian in D dimensions has D squared parameters. And the one over epsilon squared seems necessary just to deal with a sampling error. So what about mixtures of K Gaussians? Well, here there are KD squared parameters. So the naive guess is that KD squared over epsilon squared sample should suffice. So actually, prior to our work, this has remained unresolved, and is one question that uh, we resolve in this work. Some previous work of my co-authors did get close to this bound, uh, but they had a suboptimal factor of uh, in, in, in epsilon. So sort of motivated by this gap in our understanding, uh, this work, uh, it, the main goal of this work is to introduce a new technique for uh, density estimation. And one of the philosophical inspirations for this uh, new technique is this idea of Occam's razor. And that is, if you have multiple explanations for some phenomenon, then all else being equal, you ought to search for an explanation that is, uh, that is simple or that is very short. And this sort of ideology has had many manifestations in learning theory over the years. Uh, and one such example, which uh, sort of inspired some of, my, some of our ideas, uh, is this sample compression idea uh, for, uh, due to Littlestone and Wormuth, uh, which they introduced to understand classification. So in the density estimation, uh, this work introduces a notion of compression, uh, which we then use to obtain a new technique uh, for uh, density estimation uh, that is not only very simple to use, but promises to be sample efficient as well. And the main application of this new technique will be an improved upper bound uh, for the sample complexity of mixtures of Gaussians. And in fact, we'll show that KD squared over epsilon squared sample suffice. So it matches what we uh, would naively guess. Uh, and we also show a nearly matching lower bound. Uh, and just as a reminder, the TLDs on top of the O's and omegas are hiding uh, polylog factors. Okay, so let's talk a bit about compression. And let's start off with a very simple example just to get an idea of what compression is. So here I have a Gaussian distribution, a one-dimensional Gaussian, uh, with mean mu and variance sigma squared. And in the compression framework, we always begin by drawing a small number of samples. Uh, so here we're drawing a small number of samples. 
And the goal of compression is to try to encode this uh, distribution somehow uh, using as few of these samples as possible. So that seems like a somewhat mysterious task. Uh, let's just look at one possibility of how to do this. So observe that if you draw a modest number of samples, there must be a point that's really, really close to mu minus sigma with high probability. And it must also be a point that is really, really close to mu plus sigma with high probability. So let's just single these two points out and let's just give them to someone. And now what can they do with these two points? They can try to compute the mean. And if you look at this picture, the mean is really, really close to the mean of the true Gaussian. And if you look at the distance between these two points and divide that quantity by two, then that turns out to be really close to the standard deviation. So in other words, if someone had just these two points, they can actually recover an approximation to this Gaussian. All right, so the more general compression framework is as follows. First, let's fix a class F of distributions. Uh, think of F as being a Gaussian or uh, the class of mixtures of Gaussians. And there are two parties here, uh, Alice and Bob. So Alice here knows the class F, but she also has a distribution D in mind. Bob only knows the class F. The goal is for Alice to communicate uh, her distribution to Bob in some way, but in order to make it work for density estimation, we have to restrict uh, the, the kind of com uh, communication Alice is allowed to do. So what she's allowed to do is as follows. First, she can draw some samples from the distribution, uh, and then she can look at, this, uh, look at these samples and try to find some representative points. She'll then send a small subset of these points to Bob. Uh, these points are known as a compression, and Bob will take the points that he receives and try to construct some distribu distribution out of it. So if it turns out that Alice can send only T points to Bob, and Bob can reconstruct a distribution that's actually close to Alice's distribution, then we'll say that uh, the class F has a compression of size T. So one of the key uh, insights in this work, or one of the key results in this work, is a connection between compression and learnability uh, in a density estimation setting. More specifically, if you have a compression scheme of size T for some class F, there's, act there's actually a black box that you can plug, it, uh, plug this uh, compression scheme in, and it'll output an algorithm for learning any density uh, in F, uh, say up to L1 or epsilon, with only T over epsilon squared samples. So in other words, as long as you can succinctly describe any distribution in some class, then that automatically gives sample efficient algorithms. And let me just give uh, two sentences of the proof. Uh, so the idea is that if you have a compression scheme, then you can find a very small set of representative distributions. And if you're familiar with the literature, then think of this as an epsilon net. Uh, and now you've reduced to learning a finite class uh, for, which there are, uh, for which we know how to do. So the main goal is to design uh, efficient uh, compression schemes. So one very nice property of compression is that it extends very, very nicely to mixture distributions. So let's see why this is using another example. So here I have a mixture of three Gaussians. Uh, they could all have different mean and different variances. And just for simplicity, let's assume I have a uniform mixture over these three Gaussians. So as, in, uh, as always, we uh, draw a small number of points. And the main idea for compressing mixtures is that we already know how to compress each component. So let's just compress each component of the mixture separately. So for example, for the blue Gaussian, uh, we already know a two-point compression scheme for the blue Gaussian, so let's just use that and similarly for the green Gaussian and the red Gaussian. So this gives a compression scheme of size six. And more generally, if you have a class F with a compression scheme of size T, that automatically extends to a compression scheme for the K mixtures of F, and the compression scheme only uses about KT uh, samples. Okay, so now that we know that uh, if you can compress the class, you can compress mixtures, and the very fact that you can compress means that you can learn. And so the, one of the main theorems in this paper is uh, the following. Uh, if you have a compression scheme of size T for some class F, then there's a black box which will uh, take that compression scheme and it'll output an algorithm that learns K mixtures of F uh, using only KT over epsilon squared samples. So we found it a little interesting uh, that uh, compression actually extends nicely to, uh, to, to mixture distributions. And it'd be very interesting to see if such an analogous statement holds for other notions of complexity, uh, maybe something like VC dimension. Okay, so let's see how to get an algorithm for learning mixtures of Gaussians. And using our compression idea, it suffices to design a small compression scheme for just a single Gaussian. And in the paper, we show how to do this uh, using some geometric intuition. Uh, recall that a Gaussian, if it has a mean mu and covariance matrix sigma, 
then we can represent that as an ellipsoid uh, whose center is at mu and whose axes correspond to the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. So to encode a Gaussian distribution, it suffices to somehow encode the ellipsoid. Uh, so here I have a 2D example uh, just to get a sense of how to do it. Um, actually doing it requires a bit more work. Uh, so again, you draw a small number of points. And the idea is that if you wanted to encode, say, the, uh, the axis V1, you can try to do that using a linear combination of some of the drawn points. And similarly, you can do something, uh, you use a linear combination for some of the, uh, to, to approximate V2. Uh, so for example, the average might work here. And more generally, if you're in D dimensions, then each of the axes can actually be encoded with about uh, D of the sample points. And since there are D axes to encode, uh, this gives you a D squared compression scheme. Okay, good. So once you get a D squared compression scheme, then this immediately extends to an algorithm uh, for learning mixtures of K Gaussians. And moreover, it uses only KD squared over epsilon squared samples, at least up to some polylog factors. And so this improves upon some of the previous work uh, and balance that we know of. For example, it improves upon a VC dimension argument, and it also uh, uh, improves upon the work done by my co-authors. And moreover, this is nearly tight. Uh, so we do show a KD squared over epsilon squared uh, lower bound. Uh, this is a bit technical for this talk, but it uses ideas from information theory and high dimensional probability. And these compression ideas do extend to agnostic setting as well. So there's no reason to assume that uh, the actual distribution is a mixture of Gaussians. So let me just summarize the talk. So here we introduced a compression framework density estimation. And we saw that it's quite powerful. It gave almost nearly tight uh, upper bounds for learning mixtures of Gaussians. And it'd be interesting to see how far we can push these compression ideas. So whether or not we can apply, uh, or, or to see where, uh, to, to see this compression idea applied to other uh, problems in density estimation as well. And our algorithm is currently not computationally efficient. Um, it'd be interesting to see if we can get an algorithm that's more computationally efficient as well, or even if the framework can be made more computationally efficient. And just to finish off our results, we have a nearly matching lower bound. Uh, so if you want to know more, we'll be at poster 100. Uh, and thanks.